Hi, welcome back to Frazzle Dad's Minis. I'm Jim, Frazzle Dad. Today, we're going to talk about how I made this from this. As usual, Once in a Six Side is part of his Patreon, Discord, uh, YouTube, Buy Me a Coffee project. Got some great STLs this month. And when I saw this dwarf, um, I got very excited because I've been looking for really good sculpt that I could practice non-metallic metals on. And the surfaces on this, I was really excited about. And then the cool hammers got me all excited as well because I knew there was a lot of cool stuff I could do with that. Didn't know what, but I was going to jump in. So without further ado, and this time I mean it, let's get after it. As always, I start off by jotting down a few notes. I knew I wanted to work hard on the big surfaces of the armor with non-metallic metal gold. Um, there were some things about some of the hammers and other surfaces. I wanted to try something in crystal, um, and I wanted to futz around with playing with uh, marble or stone for the big kind of rectangular tubular um, hammer in his right hand. Now it's time to start blocking out the bottom color for the non-metallic metal gold. The last several times I've been working on this, I've been using AK's Rote Brown as that kind of dark, rich, red, uh, lower layer. And uh, this is a matter of just laying that down over all the parts that I'm going to hit with non-metallic metal. like how AK, not AK, Vallejo's game color gold yellow looks as a second layer. So this is getting down the next bit of NMM and uh, starting to focus on the broader areas where light would hit. You know, this is going from the black of the primer to the rote brown to a bit lighter with this gold yellow. We'll finish up with some highlights and then we'll work on transitions. Now I'm using AK's pastel yellow for the absolute brightest parts where you know, full on shiny reflection uh, will hit. And I'm doing a little bit of stippling, a little bit of brushing, um, a little bit of just getting some coverage on and then trying to soften uh, the transition ahead of time with some of that stippling. Uh, let's see, um, Jose, uh, Angel Heraldus does this technique, I think. Anyway getting the brightest stuff down. I don't have ice yellow, but uh, this pastel yellow works pretty well for me. And now starts the first of many, many, many glazing uh, actions. And so I've got a mix of the two brightest, that pastel yellow and the gold yellow. I'm trying to keep it pretty thin and I'm trying to smooth out that transition uh, across those steps there. You'll also see that there are points in time where I have to go back and get more of that highlight because I've toned things down too much. Uh, you know, again, all disclaimers, right? I'm not great at NMM. Uh, this is me futzing around and trying to figure out how to get better. So it's kind of a combo of, you know, trying to glaze, trying to extend some of the bright areas and just learning what's working and what's not. <laughs> Here 
here's me starting to block out the beard uh, with kind of the base coat. I think it was AK's black red. I wanted something slightly different than the rope brown that I was using for the NMM. Uh, and I've, again, this beard was oddly one of the cool things that attracted me to the sculpt because it just, it's got a lot of character and I, I want to see what I can do that'll be interesting with it. Now I'm adding some texture to the beard and I'm just kind of mixing what I basically have on the palette, that black red for base. I've got some Pro Acryl, I'm pretty sure it was a warm ivory, and then that uh, golden yellow. And I'm just mixing combinations of those to start to get some interesting texture on here. And I'm not going the crazy Vince Venturella ultra fine hair detail. I'm just trying to pick out some of the character and some of the interesting structure to the sculpt. And yeah, just grabbing some different colors that I've got on the palette and uh, making things look interesting. I think one of the things that I didn't understand when I first started looking at non-metallic metal was how much effort it really takes if you want something amazing. If you take a look at Kiro Cannon's NMM work in the AK FAQ book, and I'll put a link to that. It's, there's like 97 steps, and I'm not kidding. This is not hyperbole. Good NMM, and I don't pretend that I'm good at it, just takes a lot of work. Repetitive glazing, repetitive playing with highlights, repetitive, repetitive stuff. Um, so you kind of just got to get your brain in the mood that it's going to take a lot of work. And, you know, I'm only doing brush work. A lot of people bring an airbrush into the mix. Um, I haven't gotten to that point yet, uh, but I'm going to try playing around with that at some point in the near future. Anyway, I don't mean to overly belabor this, but I sort of have to. If you are looking to learn to do NMM, and re remember, I don't claim to be a master at this. Absolutely not. It's a lot of reps, but you can do it. Now it's time to get after his left hand hammer. Uh, for this one, I wanted just something uh, like a chunky cast iron. Um, and so I'm being pretty coarse in my NMM on this. This is just using various shades of um, gray that I'm mixing up on the palette, getting them on the hammer. This one I'm not all that worried about getting perfect NMM. I was just trying to convey something rough. Um, while I was having a good time playing with this, I wanted to move on to other pieces. So I didn't put a lot of effort into the left hand hammer. Now I'm using Pro Krill's Camel Green to lay down a base for the right hand hammer. Uh, middle of the night I was having insomnia, was scrolling through Instagram and saw either Angel Geraldes or Jose Diaz, I think, do this fascinating green marble. It was either a weapon or some type of like a big banner that a character was holding. And I thought, man, that looks awesome. Uh, so I decided to try to give it a try on this cool hammer. And uh, it's too small for me to use other techniques like the torn up baby wipe or dryer sheet. I was going to have to do this um, just full on with a brush. I sort of figured I might have been able to do some airbrush things, but frankly, I just wanted to focus on the brush. With that base of that camo green down, I'm now starting to stipple on some other colors. 
and I'm using some jade as a base and at various points I will add in some of that bold titanium white to this and then also some dark. I can't remember if I was using pure black but this is just complete stippling in marble-like patterns the best I can and I've, I've got a couple reference pictures that I was using. The point being try to just build up some depth in colors and patterns and ambiguous marble-like shapes and I'll get to drawing some veins a little later both with gold ink and then just with some very thinned down titanium white uh, and I've also used some flow improver um, and uh, yep just getting after trying to add depth and interest in shapes <laughs> At this point, I decided to use some Army Painter Speed Paint uh, Orc Skin that I had diluted a bunch with water. And I'm using this as a wash to kind of ease out some of the stark contrast between the different stippling work that I'd done. Uh, I even knock off the hammer, yay. Um, anyway, that Speed Paint just helps kind of get things a little more consolidated color wise but again I thinned it way down if you do something like this you want to make sure that you're not gonna knock out all of those cool shapes and contrasts just bring them together a little more <laughs> now. now it's time for some fun stuff I'm adding in some veins both white and a bit later with gold ink. The key here is a really good brush. Um, I've got one of Squidmar's uh, Kolinsky Sable brushes and I'm using a lot of flow improver on the white paint so that the paint wicks off. If you're doing any freehand work, flow improver is a blessing. It took me a long time to figure out this trick. I don't even know where I heard it from. Anyway, uh, careful drawing, just careful work. And again, I can't emphasize enough, the flow improver is key. Here I'm struggling to get some veins of gold using Liquitex gold metallic ink. It's really difficult to get the stuff flowing smoothly off of a brush. Um, I've played around with Flow Improver in the past. I wasn't having a lot of luck here. Um, don't dare use a fine Kolinsky sable with anything metallic. I think next time I might actually try using just a really sharp toothpick or even a pin and see how that rolls. The result was okay, but it wasn't great. Um, but I learned a few things. <laughs> Because I wasn't trying enough advanced things already, I had the crazy idea that why not try to make those ram's heads on the hammer look like diamonds? Because it's a dwarf king and he should have a green marble hammer with diamond ram's heads on it. Anyway. I had a couple pictures that I used for some inspiration. Turns out light in diamonds is freaking insane. But, you know, what the heck. Um, so I'm laying down a base of dark blue, and then I'll just start layering on some other lighter colors, a uh, lighter shade of blue, blend in some bold titanium white, and then finally finish off with highlights of bold titanium white and then use a bit of glazing and wash of the blue to try to tie everything together. Uh, this was really interesting. It was a fun, crazy bit to do. I don't know that it looks great, but I'm actually happy with what I learned and I'm pretty happy with the outcome. Uh, 
didn't spend a huge amount of time on this. A base of scale color sap green, which is just a glorious green. Um, you have to put a couple coats down when you're going straight over black because it's such a dark green. Then I just mixed in some uh, titanium white because I had it on the wet palette. Might as well use it. Doing a bit of highlighting, doing some blending, and then I'm going to pick out the really awesome detail on the edge of the cloak with whatever blue it was I had on the palette. I think it was uh, Pro Crow blue plus some bold titanium white. And yeah, going to call that a wash. Going to call that done for this cloak. So there you have it. I'm really pleased with the results. Um, you know, this is not a display quality little piece. There's a whole bunch of things that I chose not to work at because I'd been really focused and got the creative bug for a couple very specific things on it. And here's the piece. So there you have it. As always, please do the regular things. Uh, subscribe if you're not already. If you are, thank you for being a subscriber. Uh, hit the thumbs up, the like button. In the comments, let me know what you liked about this. Let me know if you have a particular model that's gotten you excited to focus on specific parts of you know your own uh, artwork. And until next time, remember, be kind learn something, explore, fool around, find out. After all, it's just paint and plastic. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.